Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in this week. Uh, missed the live stream last week, I do still need to do the commentary for that video. Um, but um, yeah, we're, um, we've missed a week, we'll be back. I'll do something with that uh, race that I missed. Um, but yeah, we're back with the uh, Next Gen Racing Boys and their um, illustrious VW Cup. So let me just get the link posted out. Uh, we're live uh, for a wet race. At RBR in the VWs. Come to in. Let's get that posted there. I'll get this on the Mature Racing Club page as well, just so those boys can join in. Post it in the group chat. Some of the boys do like to watch this stuff, don't know why. And then I'll show you what the track's all about. So, uh, can we go to the track? Yes, we can. Do by just giving you a bit of a drive around the track. Uh, we're in the Hooters, Sirocco. Well, I think. Let's go roof camp. <laughs> no idea what the brake balance should be, I'll just keep it neutral so it. it'll be what it'll be. Um, and we're at the Red Bull Ring for a, uh, a wet race. As you can see, it is uh, raining, it's pouring. These cars have no grip, is it? It's all oh, the wheel spin is just insane. It's only just stop wheel spinning. Okay, traction control off. Yeah, we don't want any of that nonsense. Let's see what happens. Quite nice and early for this. Oh, that's way too, yeah, it's not even that bad. Yeah, the grip's not that bad actually. Um, the bit, the corner that a lot of people are going to struggle with is this one coming up to, to, to officially turn four, but I call it turn three. It's a downhill braking zone. So, yeah, it's it's a bit more difficult to get the car stopped, but it does get stopped. Uh, this back end of the circuit is a bit drier than everywhere else, so uh, the way the water drains off here means there is more of a pronounced dry line that we're not on, as you can see. And then you take it around the sweeper car, oh, Bobby start. Bobby, you absolute weapon. He's arming quality. We've got a new host tonight. And he's very good at motivational speeches, but he's not very good at, um, at hosting lobbies. Uh, right, let me get out of here. But yeah, anyway, I gave you a bit of an idea of what the boys are on with tonight. So let's get rid of that. Let's give me some of that. Let's give me some of that. Get rid of that. Grab that. And let's get on with the show. I've noticed there's a few comments rolling in, so I'm going to come and have a look. I'm going to come and have a look at what you're saying now. Myself, one sec. Hello, Jeno. Did you need to come and watch the stream? <laughs> Sorry, that was that was really bad. <laughs> that was really bad, wasn't it? Dark Smoker, how are you doing? Yeah, um, full track as well. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how the boys adapt to this because the Sorocco's don't get the power down well enough as it is. Uh, you can just see a few of the boys just on their outlaps, just trying to find where the grip is. Uh, Tom Porter. Oh, what are you studying for, mate? I hope we're not distracting you away from anything actually important, because that would um, that would be bad. Uh, Hooters car is still in the pit, so I need to go and unenter myself. In fact, I'm going to go and do that before... Um, I'm going to go and do that before the race starts because I'll end up I'll end up being entered. Uh, right, so it's a bit of a slipstream train forming. So Red Bull Ring is a power track. Uh, we tend to split. Uh, oh, Bobby gave Seamus a massive boot then. Um, Bobby's just took himself off the circuit. Um, what was I saying? 
Yes, yeah, it's powertrain. Um, which means if your car's pow got power over handling, it will do well here. Uh, so, little cars like the Alfa Romeo and uh, maybe even the Mitsubishi Evo or the Toyota GTX 6 typically won't go well here. But the Sirocco is a power car with a BNFF and uh, does, does love this circuit. Taking a break from racing to try CPC. Oh, nice, mate. Nice. Well, good luck with Ruffin. Right, you know you are um, always welcome in the racing fold anyway, but real life does come first, mate. So good luck with all that. Hope it all works out as planned for you. But yeah, there's always um, there's always a spot open racing, mate. I love that mate, that, that motivational speech got me through my session mate. It, oh, there we go, that's Danzo, Danzo's first victim. Uh, so yeah, you, it's just to do with the weight transfer, because all the weight's going to want to go onto the front wheels. So whether it's worth setting a little bit of rear brake by just to prevent wheel lock, I'm not too sure. Uh, I need to do some laps to test it out, to give you a good idea. So the boys um, are just about setting their first laps now. No idea what a good lap time is. We're going to find out in a minute because Kazak 2 does typically um, get himself there or thereabouts. The wet weather is going to be a great equaliser because uh, not only is this a spec series where all the cars are exactly the same anyway, um, the, the wet just makes it even more apparent for, for driver skill to sort of play a part in things. Uh, so let's see what lap time is. Kiza 2 has a start uh, sets on here. It's going to be a 148. Uh, Pav immediately goes almost two seconds faster than that. So uh, let's see what Shadow Stalker might just do. He's going to put a 149 in. That's a decent time. Danzo we saw did go off track, so he's going to have to improve. Uh, Monsieur Lagafani. Oh, goes second. Nice, that 147 for Lagafani and Bobby. This isn't going to represent Bobby, we know that, but it's a 148.6 for Bobby, so we'll see if he can improve for Mr. Mr. Him Carl. Uh, this was a shoddy lap for him, so he's going to be stone dead last. Uh, meanwhile, our numero uno, uh, Mr. Pav46, 146.5 for him so far. Uh, nearly a full second above Lagerfani, who we did see put himself an impressive time together. Hopefully be back on by the end of the season. Yeah, mate. Just take your time. Do what you need to do. Uh, if you um, if you've got out of work commitments, then you've got out of work commitments, mate. You know what I mean? Can't do anything about that. Um, so I'm just checking through. All the boys are on the full wet tyre. Obviously, the full wet tyre is the one that will disperse the most amount of water, um, but by proxy has less actual tread on the um, on the surface. So it devotes more of its surface area to shredding water rather than grip. Uh, so you do trade off lap time for, for actual in-game grip, I guess. Uh, so let's see if Pav can improve on his time. He's looking like he's got real good car control in the case. That's two behind him does seem a little bit more unsettled. Uh, so probably taking a little bit less time to get his car settled down. Being smooth in these conditions is where the speed is. Uh, Pav doesn't improve his time. Let's see if anyone else improves. Doesn't look like they're going to just yet. No, no one else improves. Lagerfan is just come around the last corner now. Uh, we'll get a little pop-up in the bottom left if anyone improves. Dando does improve slightly, but not enough to hop him up. Uh, Lagerfan is actually a lot slower that time round. Uh, let's check in on Bobby. How's he going? Puts a much better time in there. Pretty much 47 dead for Bobby. Um, cutting the gap down to path to just half a second now. Uh, so we've got three and a half minutes left of this session, so enough more, enough time for two more flying laps for these guys. Uh, him, Carla, 148.3. It's good, it's good, and it finally shows us where he's uh, where he's meant to be. Uh, currently he's six. I wonder if he can improve on that. So a lot of the boys are opting to use traction control, uh, and that is just to quell the um, the wheel spin that you'll get. Uh, like I said before, most of this tyre tread is dedicated to shedding water. Um, so there's not going to be as actual much grip, but it's interesting the top two aren't traction control users. They are just relying on the, the feel of the car. So probably just looks to brake just a tiny bit late. Or is that the karting line into, um, into turn four? 
Now the Argo fan is using TC. Uh, to be fair, there's no shame in using TC. I think they probably would do in the real world as well. Mr. Burnt Fry. Where are you? Why aren't you here? What are you playing at? You're in work still. Let's see if Pav... Five or 146.7 have been within uh, two tenths of each other. So it's certainly consistent to say the least. I don't think anyone alive. Danzo puts himself a good lap together. Uh, Lagerfan has got one more crack of the whip. Uh, if he does want anything to do with that, Bobby's not managed to improve 148 1 for Bobby. Uh, you're home. Get in then. You'll be in for Evos, won't you? Um, I can't race the Evos tonight because I've got I've, to, I've got so much to do. It's, it's all right. uh, Burt Fry, here you are. There you go. Right, let's have a flick through. See where everyone's at. So currently, um, most guys will get time for another lap. I should imagine most. Um, so, Pav 46, current pole sitter, setting a 146.5 on lap 2. Uh, let's see if he's on for an improved time. No, he's uh, just a tiny bit slower. Uh, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Motivator, uh, in second, 147.0, half a second down from Pav's time. Another half second away from Bobby's, uh, Mr. Lagerfani, 147.5 for him. Uh, he's... Um, got work to do if he wants to get himself up there he is currently running a slower lap and we've got a slow Seamus tail um, just all over Kater 2's tail in hope of a slipstream so these boys are going to get uh, get around to do another lap uh, Kater 2 improves but then Seamus improves almost immediately afterwards so no change there but both guys have improved their lap times uh, him, Carl's parked up. Uh, I don't think he's bothered. Uh, don't know if he got that wrong or what. I'm not sure, but that's qualifying over for him, Carl. I'm afraid he's not going to be able to do anything now. Uh, Danzo's got through in time for another lap. Shadow Stalker improves as well, and he'll get another lap in uh, to see. So last laps for everyone now. Uh, Bobby has improved again. 146.8 for Bobby, so he's got one more go at this. He's got three tenths to find. So it's all or nothing for Bobby now. He is up on his time, so we're going to keep an eye on Bobby. Meanwhile, Pav, are you setting time in boards of light, Pav? No, you're not. Uh, Pav and Lagerfani are both, uh, sorry, not Pav and Lagerf, Bobby and Lagerfani are both on improved times for uh, the first sector. And lose a lot of time in sector two here where Bobby is as well. All the time is won and lost. So Bobby's gone very deep. I'm gonna guess that's knackered his chances up, but we'll see. And we are on approach to um, we are on approach to the timing line, so we'll jump to Lagerfani and see if he's improving. Uh, it will tell us in just a second. He is two temps down. Bobby, what are you doing? Bobby is two tanks down as well, so it's all about this man, Mr. Pav 46. See if he improves his time. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to improve this time round. Uh, Pav provisional pole, but he does look pretty safe. Can KZ2 has to do anything as he comes across the line? Doesn't look like he can slow. Seamus can't either by looks of it. They set normal times. Bobby, uh, let's have a look at Lager Fanny first before Bobby comes over the uh, line. Has to be an absolute mighty last sector. It's an improvement, but not enough for Lagerfani. Can Bobby improve as well? He can't, unfortunately. That's pretty much qualifying over for most of these guys. Uh, him, Carl's just on a slow lap. Uh, Danzo's out, and Shadowstoke is going to be lost across the line, but doesn't improve. Uh, so, confirmation of the grid. Uh, so, we've got the two MRC boys representing at the top. So, Pav and Bobby are uh, going to be 1 2. It's going to be all about that slipstream then up to turn number two. We'll see how that goes. Uh, yes, I am happy, Bert Fry. Happy to see you, mate. I'm glad to have you here. As always. I've done no but talk all day, by the way. So if my voice starts going, you know what? Literally, my job, my work today has just been talking all day. OK, 
Okay, so 20 minutes on the clock. Unlike Australia, they haven't cancelled this because of coronavirus and we're all underway. Everyone gets away well. What's that, Pav? Uh, I was going to say, it looks like Bobby's trying to shut the door to Lager Fanny there. Lager Fanny has to back out of it. Okay, so two hats in the background look to be getting a little bit, um, a little bit close with someone, but everyone has made it through turn one alive. Kaiser two has looks to have gone up a position there, so he's jumped slow, Seamus. It's going to be a slipstream battle now. Bobby pulls out the slipstream to have a look at Pav, doesn't uh, doesn't commit to that move. Uh, slow Seamus looks to have got his fourth place back, but Kaiser, oh, it's all gone wrong here. It's all gone wrong. Lagerfan is facing backwards. And we're going to go back and have a look at that. You bet yourself. Uh, but that has given Bobby and Pav the opportunity now to to break away. Those boys at the top could do be working together if they want to escape the onslaught from behind. Uh, slow Seamus, we know, is not slow. Uh, everyone gets through the turn. Okay, we're going to go back and have a look at uh, that turn two incident now and just see what happened. Uh, we'll jump on board with Liger Fanny and just go and have a look from his perspective what happened in that incident. So, on approach to turn two, uh, looks like he went in a little bit deep. Uh, upon getting back on track, just just lost the car. Um, yeah, he definitely just lost the back end of the car there, I'm afraid. So that's Liger Fanny right down at the back of the grid now. Uh, so he's seven seconds back from the leaders and got a lot of time to make up. He did put a stonking performance together in qualifying, so we know he's got a good lap in him. Um, meanwhile, Pav and Bobby about a second between those guys, but they have got a two and a half second buffer to the guys behind. Uh, slow Seamus. Not got the slipstream of the guys ahead, but he is, uh, he's also not giving the slipstream to the guys behind. Uh, that incident earlier on has helped a few people out, including this man, Mr. Him Carl. He's benefited from that. He's up into fifth now, and he'll be eager to um, he'll be eager to make some moves in this race, I should imagine. Lager fan is up to six already. Looks like Shadow Stoker just made it uh, made it go a little bit deep. Danzo's all the way down in eighth. Danzo's had a shocker somewhere. Didn't catch that one on camera, I'm afraid, but now he's going to have a go at Shadow Stalker up into turn two. He's got that move made before Shadow Stalker dips himself out of the um, slipstream, but just backs out of a move. A sensible driving there from Mr. Shadow Stalker. Now he's going board with Bobby. Uh, so he's chasing Pav down, and now he is getting slipstream to Pav. And he's going to start putting the pressure on nice and controlled on the throttle going ahead. But he's just holding third gear quite a long time. Whether he's doing that on purpose or not, I can't really tell. Um, but Pav was able to build a little bit of a gap when he was doing just that. Uh, so Bobby is still rocking the cancer research livery. I think he's uh, signed a long-term sponsorship deal with them. I hope he, hopefully he's repping his new merch as well. This might develop into a little bit of a fight later on in the race. And they, they might be sensible to sort of just keep it chill for a, a, a few laps yet, because there's still a uh, quarter of an hour to go. Um, slow Seamus isn't that far behind, so if they start battling, uh, there's a lot of cars behind that quite like the places that they're currently occupying. So they might be sensible just to go, let's, let's just chill. You get a slipstream, I'll let you go, and then I'll get the slipstream on you the lap afterwards, and I'll I'll go. But I know these two. Pav's, Pav would do that. Bobby's Bobby just Bobby will just take it. <laughs> Bobby's got no chill. So it looks like Bobby's about to go for a move on. Pav pulls out the slipstream. I'm gonna get that move made on braking. Pav gives him all the room in the world. Goes for a nice little cutback, does he? I was just going to get the power down on exit. That was beautifully executed by those boys. That's exactly how racing should be done. I perhaps saw the move coming a mile off and, um, and planned well for it. So that's good racing from Pav there. But a nice overtake from Bobby. I'll give him all the credit for that. Um, he placed his car well. Uh, it's just in these conditions going to be difficult to get the power down. Uh, looks like he's coming for an attack on Pav now. Coming out of turn four. He's going to get that move made. Right, but Pav does have the inside line, so he's going to stick it in. He is. Oh no, he's backed out. It looks like he's, it looked like he was in for a minute, but he's backed out of that move. Uh, Bobby though gets it in the kitty little a little bit, and that's going to let Pav attack him. Uh, 
So I'm going to keep an eye on that gap to Seamus. It was 3.7 seconds, and in the space of two corners, it's two seconds. That's that is exactly what I'm talking about because he's going to be getting there. Uh, he's loving this now, Seamus. He'll be watching. He'll be watching this kick off, thinking I've got a chance here. These these two boys can just take each other out. Uh, let's go and have another look at that move from Pav's perspective. Uh, so this is what Pav's looking at. So he gives Bobby all the room. Uh, he, was just much, he was just much better on power. So yeah, lovely move from Pav there. Alright Craig, how you doing? Thanks for joining us mate. Right on rice, yeah, mate. <laughs> mate, he's closing in. He's closing in still. Look at that. He's all over him. Like a tramp on chips, mate. 1.6 now. He's, he's about slipstream range. Uh, I guess the good thing, well, not the good thing for Slow Seamus, the bad thing for Slow Seamus actually is that these boys have stopped their battle for the time being. There is a partial truce. Um, but all it takes is one of them to make a slight mistake. Looks like Pav went way too deep there, and um, they're going to fight again. So they're now going to go side by side into T5 or T6, whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, watch that time. So shame, let's just bolt down now. That'll come down to about a second in a minute. <clears throat> right, so that's Bobby ahead. Uh, Pav's had to concede that place, I think, eventually. But he's going to go for the cutback. Doesn't get that done. Uh, Seamus is now getting the slipstream from these guys. And slipstream at this circuit matters. Uh, especially that... Uh, well, basically, this circuit is three long straights and a little bit of a twisty sector in the middle. That's basically what this circuit is. Uh, so Bobby just goes a little bit wide onto the curbing. Not a ton of grip out there. Let's see if Pav goes for a move into turn one. Turn one's not really an overtaking spot unless you're fully committed. So Pav's going for it anyway. Nice overtake that. So I'm giving you a virtual round of applause for that overtake Pav because that was absolutely delicious. And it's gone board with Seamus. So this is Seamus's view right now. 1.3 seconds ahead and behind. So he's just watching this all unfold. So he's seeing Bobby go for a move on Pav. He's able to uh, close up so much in braking and just yeah he's, he's, he's holding third gear and all so they're all doing it it must be must have an advantage uh, so Seamus now Seamus is now in the fight for the lead basically and the next person to get involved in this fight for the lead is Gazer 2 and he likes a battle and all um, so <laughs> it's all going to kick off here guys and he's in the coronavirus car, so no one wants to go near him. Uh, you know what you should have done with that KZ2? You should have stuck a mask on the front of it. That's what you should have done. Oh, we'll have to isolate you in the pits, mate. That's what I'll have to do. Alright, let's get our eyes off the lead battle for a minute and just check in on everyone else. Lager funny. after that incident early on, he's now just six seconds off the leaders. Um, so he's doing a good job. He's putting in personal best lap times, lap after lap. So, um, good job, Lager funny for that so far. Uh, he will probably still walk away from this disappointed. Uh, uh, but we'll keep an eye on the gap to him and KZ2. Let's uh, see if he's able to reel that in. Um, him, Carl, in six at the minute. Comfortable gap behind the Danzo and Shadow Stalker. Um, but him, Carl, uh, we've been really impressed with him over the course of the season. But uh, this probably isn't his finest hour right here. But that being said, he's only nine seconds off the leader. And they're all fine up there, so... Oh, could happen, yeah. Uh, Pav, however, is pulling away a little bit. So he's got 1.2 seconds. Yeah, and FYI, KZ2 is now in this battle as well. So it's a four car fight in the first place. At the halfway point in the race. So uh, KZ2, the ninja from Wuhan, is on his way. Um, is on his way in, he's hoping to penetrate the top three uh, with his deadly illness anytime soon. Uh, if you're watching, by the way, let me know who you're cheering on. 
uh, in your predictions. Oh, KZ2 has just bottled it, I'm afraid. Uh, KZ2 has been um, has been vaccinated and is all the way down to fifth place. Uh, I am afraid the coronavirus has been exterminated and has been overtaken by the cigarette company. Um, so that, that's good news for Lager Fanny, who again is setting personal best lap time. So he's putting in a solid performance since that off earlier on in the race. So he's now got the top three to chase down, but KZ2 isn't finished with him yet. Uh, meanwhile, Bobby's having to worry more and more about Seamus, and uh, because of that, Pav is managing to drive away. Uh, so unfortunately for Bobby, he's now got two seconds to Pav, and he's not going to the slipstream. Uh, now, slow Seamus is uh, is looking at this situation. He would probably be wise to work with Bobby for the next few laps, and um, and do what Bobby and Pav didn't do, which was work together these two work together they can catch Pav if they fight Pav's gone simple as that as they're going to have a work together for first or battle for second that is your choice boys and to be fair it looks like Seamus is giving them a little bit of a bump up anyway so yeah I would given given the body language of these cars well Bobby's body language is I'm going into the dirt um, this has all gone off now. Seamus is waiting up, so I think there was contact. I think there was contact there, because Seamus has slowed right down, and that is an effort. He's letting Bobby back through. So Bobby, for whatever reason, hasn't took that place off Seamus. We've bookmarked that. We're going to go and have another look at it in a minute and see what happened. Um, great news for Pav, though. That is fantastic news for Pav, because Pav has now got a seven-second lead over the next car um, which is the deadly virus so if the World Health Organization can step in and stop uh, KZ2 from spreading that would be wonderful uh, Lager Fanny now suddenly finds himself back in a podium playing place after the uh, second and third position cars took themselves out of contention uh, so we're going to go back and have another look at these boys it's all it's all starting to get a little bit meaty now uh, him Carl's in auto drive so looks like he's it's probably gone for a whiz. Who knows? Uh, yeah, we're going to go and have another look at that uh, that incident in just a second. See what uh, see what kicked off. So Seamus is bump drafting Bobby there, and I'll be honest, I didn't hear any contact. We're going to go back and have another look at that from Seamus's perspective, because uh, Seamus is now up past Lager Fanny, so. But we need to see that we need to go back and have a look at this. Yeah, after have to Seamus, Seamus backed out of that. He backed out of that well in time, I'd say. Um, however, we have noticed a little bit of lobby lag glitch, so that could that could be that could have caused it. So who knows? Uh, what happened there with Bobby and Larka Fanny? <laughs> What's going off here now? It's all kicking off. Now uh, Bobby just got himself a little bit. Yeah, uh, Larka Fanny's got himself a little bit wide, a little bit of contact there between those two. Uh, nothing doing, to be fair. Uh, well, this is Stu get on the podium. Hard to see Pav being caught. Got to agree. Um, and it would be great to see this man on a podium. He's currently struggling with the exit of turn two, though. He's made two mistakes out of this race, and it's cost him dearly. Which is a shame, you know, because he's sticking in some... He's, he's put in a good performance. Um, but I think he's been about in every place you can be in this race. Um, but that being said, the fan he's got everywhere, and that's kind of a... It's not always a bad thing, you know what I mean? Um, Pav is a machine. You are right. Um, I race with him in a GT3 league at the minute. Uh, not a GT, a, it's a GT league. So we got GT3, GT4. Um, yeah, and he is. He's an absolute machine. This path. So um, I knew him coming in this championship. Does, you know, he's got a good chance of doing very well. Um, we do have some really good drivers in here, though. Drivers that have been driving these cars quite a while. Kza2 has now suddenly in a second place spot. Slow Seamus in third. Uh, Seamus has got a second gap to Bobby. Let's just have a recap of where we are with this because we've had to review the replays um, 
for the incidents. And I think while we've been doing that, we've done an ITV and missed a load of action. So. Um. Now there's five minutes to go. So Pav 46, eight and a half seconds in the lead. Um, unless he butchers something, he's he, yeah, he's, he's fine. <laughs> Uh, Kaiser 2, uh, kind of on his own now as well, so I think everyone's given the coronavirus a bit of a wide berth, so he's two and a half seconds to Seamus behind. Uh, so Seamus obviously had that incident a few laps ago, um, like I said, on the footage that I saw, it doesn't appear like he was at fault for anything. Um, certainly looked like he backed out of any move that he was going to make. Um, but that being said, there could be a bit of lobby glitch, could a lot, who knows, who knows. Um, I'm sure if Bobby has a concern with it, he can send the details into the stewards, but either way, Bobby is in fourth now as well. Uh, Mr. Lagerfani in fifth was holding a podium position for a little while, and he is still in a shout with getting one. So, as we've seen before, these two fight here, like they're doing, if these two scrap, Lagerfani's got a podium, basically. Oh, it's all kicking off back here. Shadow Stalker, him, Carl, and Danzo. So, him, Carl, we saw auto driving a few laps ago. Suddenly come back. I think he did just go and have a was. Um, yeah, and um, he's now in a fight. Shadow Stalker currently holding sixth position in this fight. And he's trying to fight off him, Carl, and Danzo, though. So, currently sixth, seventh, eighth. Very close as well. Uh, so, just a second or two between all those guys. Who else have we got? That's it. Pav now 10.6 seconds ahead. Keza 2 Haas is getting caught slowly but surely by Seamus. Seamus in turn is relatively close to Bobby, but not enough really to have to worry about him too much. I'm saying for Lagerfani, he's within range, but he's not within range of a move. Uh, so Lagerfani now, if I were you, watch what Bobby does in terms of how he enters and exits corners what his breaking points are, any weak spots that you're particularly gaining on him, and, um, and pick an area to attack him on. Uh, exit of turn four appears to be a bit of a weak spot for Bobby, um, but he is pretty strong everywhere else, so um, and you don't tend to catch him napping either, Bobby. He's, he's pretty much on it quite a lot. Uh, Shadow Stuck is doing a good job behind the... Uh, the, the fight between him, Carl, and Danzo is beginning to hot up a little bit. It's, like it's very respectful, I've got to be honest. They're giving each other absolutely tons of room. Uh, but any one of these, with Danzo goes for a lovely move on Shadow Stoker. Shadow Stoker sees that late, just has to get out of his move. That's going to affect his corner in speed. Uh, potentially let him, Carl, up as well. Shadow Stoker is going to stick it in uh, and hopefully keep his place. Him Carl tries to creep around the outside, doesn't manage to get that move done. Um, again, very respectful between all these guys from what I can see. Uh, him Carl's just got a better drive coming out of that corner, but Shadow Stuck has got the inside line. Him Carl goes for the cutback. That's a beautiful move. That's absolutely beautiful, my friend. I'll bookmark that, we'll go back and have a look at it. Um, <laughs> yeah, just kind of caught Shadow Stuck a nap in there, but I want them. Uh, let's go back and have a look from the perspective of, um, of him, Carl. So, yeah, so we see Shadow Stoker just cut it a little bit deep. Yeah, that was that was just, that was really nice um, throttle control that by him, Carl. Um, so he's now up to seventh and he's going to be having a go at Danzo any second now. In fact, he's already got that move done. Danzo's backed out of it. So Danzo was like, no, I want the slipstream, mate. You can um, you can go ahead and um, and pull me off. No, pull me along. Pull me off is a different type of move, isn't it? Um, someone who knows all about pulling off though is uh, MRC Bobby. He's been dropped by Seamus, I'm afraid. Three seconds now, and the drivers are as close to being done as you can possibly imagine. There's 30 seconds left to go. Most of these guys are going to make it across the finish line to do another lap. So. Uh, the first person that's going to do so is Pav 46, 12 seconds ahead. Uh, he's going to start his final lap. Uh, he can, he can, and he can basically afford to just take it nice and steady now. Uh, let's see who doesn't make it across the line in time. I'm um, keeping an eye on the battles behind. All seems well so far. 
Let's see if anyone opts to slow down. So Lagerfan has just not made it in time. So top five have to go again so we can focus on the race for six, which is currently being won by him, Carl. After that lovely move on Shadow Stalker, that move did give Danzo an opportunity. Him, Carl's just ran it a little bit wide, just enough of a gap to Danzo to keep it though. So a good result for him, Carl, in sixth position. Uh, Danzo brings home seventh, with Shadow Stalker bringing home eighth position. Uh, let's focus on this. Uh, Kaiser Two Hassel versus Sheamus for second. This is getting very close now. I think there was. A, um, I think someone outbreaked themselves. Uh, this is the closest thing that's going off on track at the minute. Uh, Shadow, uh, sorry, not Shadow Stalker. KZ2 seems to be taking it nice, slow, and steady. Uh, the rest of the field has relatively decent gaps between them all. Well, this is what uh, this is what KZ2 is looking at. A steady line of cars behind him, ready to take this place if he so much as makes a little slip up. You can just hear the um, hear the turbocharged engine just revving its absolutely nuts off. Six finished. That's him done. Thirteen seconds in the lead nothing else to say about that Seamus runs it wide but he's safe I think from the assault from behind so KZ2 picks up to second place we slow Seamus in third Bobby just misses out in fourth and Lager Fanny in fifth place what a race there were stages of that race where there was absolutely nothing to talk about um, but a wet race always produces um, always produces a little bit of drama and we saw that uh, we saw that today Stalker, Carl and Danzo are great to race. We've had some cracking battles at all. Yeah, mate, I'd, I'll agree with that. I've never seen a single... Yeah, I mean, that race there just kind of proves what I mean. Even in these sort of conditions, those boys will keep it clean. Um, clean, consistent and basically on track. So, yeah, credit to the guys. Uh, let me save the replay just to remind myself because I will forget. There we go. Burnt fire, where have you gone? Not... Uh, Seamus, I'm going to say I don't think you did, mate. I don't think you did. Uh, so confirmation of your results then, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. Fastest lap goes to Bobby, though. He picked up a 146.2 on lap two. Um, but path 46, once he got in the lead, he pretty much stayed there. Uh, and came home 13 seconds ahead of Kaiser 2 Haas in seconds. With slow Seamus picking up a third position. Um, and you can see the rest of the results on your screen. Uh, please say the Evos is dry. I want to say it is. It's a support race, Danzo. It's got to be the same conditions, mate. It's got to be. Uh, cheers, Tom. Appreciate it, mate. I'm, um, I've done no but talk all day, so I've been kind of conscious my voice has cracked from time to time. Just, yeah. And I've had to wash home as well, and I haven't had a chance to have my usual cup of tea. Well, there we go. Um, right, so thank you very much for um, thank you very much for sticking with us and watching this one. What I might do, I might go live a little bit later on and commentate last week's race that I haven't done yet because I've had that much on. Um, so, I've, yeah, just keep your eyes out. Get the bell icon clicked. So if you go on to CJW Racing, click onto that. Uh, you'll see subscribe next to that there'll be a little bell if you click the bell every time i go live or upload a video you'll just get a little notification to say what i've done um and it'll just tell you when we're live so if you do race in these leagues if you're a member of any of the racing groups or you just like this sort of stuff um get subscribed and click the bell icon to get notified every time we go live i believe if he's still in the chat he'll correct me but i believe dark smoker is um is going to be live with the uh, p1 boys in about 15 minutes time um, and he'll be um, he'll be doing some more of this sort of stuff. Um, I'd love to agree with you, Tom, and say it is, but I don't, it's not. I don't have any of the symptoms I've checked. <laughs> just to, just to be on the safe side. Um, no, I don't have a cough, don't have a fever, nothing. It's just a sore throat. That's all. Um, right then, that's it for me, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for tuning. Uh, love you lots, and see you later.